When I was about six years old, I remember my parents started attending a church and uh, there were no instruments allowed in this church. It was a very interesting way to be raised. You know, it was all a cappella singing. And I just absolutely fell in love with words. It was kind of weird. I was a bit of a word nerd and I would read the thesaurus and the dictionary and quotable quotes books. And I started writing poetry at about six and I got my first guitar. And uh, I remember the first song I learned was uh, Four Strong Winds by Ian Tyson. And I realized those poems I'd been writing were actually songs. And I kind of pieced them together and it, it came out sounding more country than anything else. And it just seemed to be a real natural progression. Before I got started in the music business, I, I was a registered nurse at the Alberta Children's Hospital. I got a song for you guys. <laughs> I got a job offer to work at ICU and a record deal offer in the same week and I had to decide what I was going to do and uh, it's one of those moments in life where you look back and you wonder what would have happened if you would have gone either way. Let's do it. And I'm glad it turned out the way that it did. You know, you can use music in a really powerful way to be able to raise awareness for issues and causes. When I first started, I was pretty shy. I got my start at the Calgary Stampede singing uh, at the Youth Talent Showdown. And uh, I started wearing a hat probably two years into that contest. And it gave me a bit of a new confidence. It also gave me something to hide behind. And I remember watching one of my favorite artists, Garth Brooks, do his thing and thinking to myself, man, if I could ever get to that point, wouldn't it be amazing? And I remember playing at the Grandstand Show um, for the Stampede 100, and I played every night. And there was one night in particular, I was up 70 feet in the air, being hovered above the audience on this five foot in diameter platform. And I looked over to the Saddle Dome and Garth was playing there that night. And I thought to myself, man, I did it. I'm Jean. Jean, I'm Paul. You know, there really wasn't a whole lot of planning. It was just being willing to show up and work hard and, and do what it took whenever the opportunities came around. When I was 23 and you're getting all this attention and everyone's telling you how great you are all the time, it's really easy to, to take that in, but it also puts a lot of pressure on you. And I, I started thinking about how I could use my platform to, to help other people. We started a campaign called Not In My City, and the idea behind it was to raise awareness for the, the growing issue in Canada of human trafficking. And uh, through a completely unrelated meeting, I met a fellow, I talked to him about my dream to be able to have our campaign featured on a chuck wagon tarp at the Calgary Stampede. And he goes, you know what, I know a guy. So his name's Chad Harden. So the next day, it was the day of the tarp auction, Chad called me and I shared with him the realities of what's going on with this very difficult issue. And he said, you know, I've got two daughters, it's easy for me to stand up for this. Next thing I know, they bought a tarp and they basically gave it to us. And so when I watch Chad, <laughs> he's out there doing what men need to be doing. He's standing up for people that uh, can't stand up for themselves. And he's doing an amazing job of it. It makes what I do all worth it, you know? And um, I think that this story and what's happening here at the Stampede with awareness being raised for Not In My City will go down, got something in my eye, in history. I'm Alberta bound, this piece of heaven I'd have found. I love doing what I do and, and getting a chance to do this, man, I hope it, it lasts for the rest of my life. And I'll be Alberta bound until I die. Thank you guys. Ha <laughs> ha!